Well, I mean, look, we have a few rules uh, that aren't about uh, check size, but you know, first of all, we only invest in companies we'd be proud to tell our families and our daughters and our wives, et cetera, that we invested in. Right. So when ultimately these things return and, and we end up being lauded for however we've done, I want to be able to look everyone I know straight in the eye and say, I'm really proud of the impact that thing has had on the planet. And I don't want yeah. to be embarrassed by any of it. So, uh, and, you know, we invest in things that we feel we can personally move the needle. Mm. So instead of just throwing darts at a board, like in the public market, I want to know that this is a company that we can help. Right. We know exactly how to be helpful. Why is that important? Because you, if you're not helpful and you made a bunch of money, wouldn't that be a fine outcome? No, but what happens is it's a lot less likely you're going to make a bunch of money ah. if you're not helpful. So it's a right? signaling thing. And so it's not even just a signaling thing. It's just, first of all, I sleep better at night knowing that I have control over my own destiny, mm -hmm. that I can I can take a company that's good already and hopefully make it great. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and so that makes it, you know, I've, I've been a public markets trader. That's the worst I've ever felt. You see red on the board yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it. Except, except beat yourself up that maybe you're wrong on this yeah. one, right? And so, but with our companies, I feel like I, and, and we are de-risking it in a way. We see that the ways we can help are the ways that are complementary to what they need. Mm -hmm. They have talents we don't have, what are the but we have talents they don't. What are the most impactful things you can do for a company? Because you can't go to work with them every day. You can't, you can't build the product. You can't live it. But what are the things that you found you know, you can actually do that moves the needle. Yeah, it totally depends on the company, uh, by the way. Yeah, and, but what are the top two um, things? Yeah. The top few. Uh, the biggest one that I see at the seed stage is that more often than not helping them tell their own story. I think you yes. walk in with a company, early stage, they're great engineers often, they're incredible technical capacity, but even in their initial pitch, they are just struggling still to encapsulate what their company does. By the end of most of those pitches, by this point, you, the three of us have sat in Thousands of startup pitches sure. know exactly how to tell a narrative. Just this week. <laughs> yes. Literally, <laughs> literally by the end of that meeting. And it, this isn't to, to knock anybody. I think there's incredible storytellers out there still at the founder level. For the most part, because this is a learned skill, we can tell a narrative often for a company better than that company can and can help train them how to pitch their company to different audiences. Ah. To a founder, to a, a first hire, to the press, to their first thousand users, to their first million users. Each one of those narratives is very, very different. And I think teaching a company how to be a, a soundboard of this is hitting the part that you want to hit. This is telling your narrative that you want to hit. This is missing it. Let's refocus on, you know, you don't have empathy for your users here. Let's talk about how this can be reframed. That is, I think, day one, the biggest impact that we can make. And frankly, we whether we invest in a company or not, we try to help sort of reframe that for companies. When we pass, that's often a lot of the feedback we're giving back. So somebody, we, we spent a lot of time like revising decks and and changing copy on websites, even for companies that we yeah. don't work with in the end. Yeah. Like, so it's funny. We've seen a cultural shift. You you were out in the web, even, you know, in, in technology well before I was. I mean, you were in that crazy movie where they where they followed all you guys. What was that thing? We live in public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jo I mean, sorry, of Josh Harris so, I mean, in the 90s. Like when we were doing streaming media, yeah. It was I mean, crazy. you were an OG's OG. But yeah. what you've seen is this transformation where there was an era in Web 1.0 where it was this whole sector was dominated by slick talkers and storytellers. At the peak, it became like just salesmen, sales executives. And, like, MBA. and the most yeah. important people in Silicon Valley were the investment bankers. Yep. They were the true rock stars at the yep. time. And so, because the whole journey was look, have a tight enough story that you can convince somebody to give you the couple million dollars it took to start something. And go public with no revenue. And 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 then ultimately have that VC pawn it off to another VC and have that VC who is usually an ex-banker get it to the public market and yeah. hope you could get out of your lockup before everyone picked up on the fact that your company was all bull and smoke yeah. and mirrors. And so what happened was when that all collapsed, all those people left town. Yeah, They went to Wall Street, they went to these other places. Yeah. And the only guys who were left were the actual true died in the wall entrepreneurs and the actual coders. And so it coincided with the, the emergence of true open source right. tools where now instead of having to have a multi-million dollar Sun and Oracle development environment, you could literally just code from your laptop. Yeah, you're on and AWS instead of in 10 seconds. Instead of having a dedicated T1 line that costs thousands and thousands of dollars a month, yeah. you could just log into AOL and ultimately you got yeah. three megs of DSL to your house or you could go to yeah, an internet cable cafe. Modem, yeah. Whatever, yeah. And you could start building. And so what happened was the storytellers left, the builders through stuff like Y Combinator and that whole ethos that came with it of let's empower the builders started to rise. And there was a lot of 
improvement. The legal documents got easier. So that sure. was demystified. The fundraising process was demystified. Who actually a lot of wrote it was checks? standardized. Just yeah. Who were the angels? Like Open Angel Forum was designed because nobody knew who the angels were. Exactly. They couldn't and find so, us. And so th there were all these obstacles to the traditional startup that were being removed and it was being really democratized. But the one thing that wasn't injected back in the ecosystem was the storytelling. Mm. It was just gone. Right. And so you would go to a Y Combinator demo day and you just bang your head against the wall. And you're yeah. like, those might be the smartest kids I've ever seen when I actually get into a conversation with them. But they cannot sum up in two sentences what the hell it is they're doing. No. But and, they can tell you the TAM yeah. and they can yell into the microphone. <laughs> well, they it's can certainly build it better than anything. I mean, there's too much yelling now. Over the years, they've certainly tried to invest in storytelling and it's become a little bit standardized and cliche. Yeah, yeah it's But back then comically. it was it was, you know, the original demo days at Y Combinator were were 12 companies running live code on stage, doing live demos, inviting yeah. VCs up to participate and try it out for themselves. And there was a lot of feedback and QA. And so these were much better. Truly, truly talented, geeky engineers who were blowing all of our minds, what they were capable of building with so few resources. That was a massive change from the yeah. web van era. But they didn't have the storytelling capability. But they didn't have the storytelling. And so right. I would have answered the question the same way. First and foremost, that is the thing that I think is one of our competitive advantages. Yeah. And I think is the thing that that is so complimentary to these guys who have good product chops and good coding chops. But that last mile is missing of how do we tell everybody what we're doing yeah. here? I mean, look, none of our companies can actually afford to market, mm. right? It has to be a product that's not only intuitive to use, but we have to empower each user to be able to describe that product to another user right? because they're our marketing force. Hey, everybody. I want to tell you about the upgrade cycle. Yes, we upgrade our phones, we upgrade our computers, but when's the last time you upgraded your underwear? I recently did, and I wear Tommy John's exclusively. It is a revolutionary men's underwear product. I wear it, and it's perfect. I wear the boxer briefs. You might be boxers. Other people might be briefs. I split the difference. I like boxer briefs. They're so comfortable. They're so lightweight. Tons of breathability, which, gentlemen, let's be honest, breathability is important. It never rides up your leg and the waistband never rolls down. I met the founder actually of Tommy John and he has ground out this business from revenue and iterated on this product. He is obsessive. He's a maniac when it comes to product design and he has applied his product design to underwear, t-shirts, socks, all this great stuff. And really they are much more uh, than just underwear. I have the undershirts and they are beautiful, like a second skin. If you wanna wear an undershirt and have multiple layers because layers are for players, we all know that. And you see those v VC pictures. Those VCs have the undershirt, huh? Then they have the shirt on top of it. Then they have a sweater. Then they have a blazer. Sometimes you'll see some of those VCs with a scarf. Three, four, five layers if you want to be in the game. Layers are for players. And it's patented 21st century technology and design. It's impossible to get a wedgie if you wear Tommy John's. It's the best pair you'll ever wear or it's free. That's their guarantee. The best pair you'll ever wear or it's free. Tommy John, no adjustment needed. All right, here's your call to action. This is the important part. Go to tommyjohn.com slash twist. Go to tommyjohn.com slash twist to experiencing life-changing comfort, and you'll get 20% off your first order. You can't do better than that. tommyjohn.com slash twist. tommyjohn.com slash twist to experience life-changing comfort and get 20% off your first order. Welcome to the Tommy John family. It's a great startup and they make great products. Get in there and upgrade your underwear, socks, and your undershirts. Great product, love it. I'm, real, I'm wearing it right now. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. <laughs> 